When I was young, like a teenager, maybe like 13 or 14, my goal was to meet everyone on the planet. I mean, I wanted to meet people, I wanted to talk to them, I wanted to find out about their lives. And, um, you know, as an adult, of course, I realized that's a crazy dream. But this is sort of the way I've interpreted that. When I started this series, it, it was just about um, people that I knew and loved. So there is like family in this, in this series. There is, um, you know, friends, acquaintances. Um, and then it became more about, you know, the travel and meeting people on the road. My husband and I were traveling throughout uh, Southeast Asia and we came across all these people and I tried to communicate with them and I couldn't speak the language. I would walk down the street, you know, and this old man would be walking towards me and he'd have his, you know, his eyes down and he wouldn't be looking and he, then he'd look up, I'd meet his eye and I'd smile and he would smile. And it was like instant communication. Then I realized that the universal language was the smile. And that's when I decided to do more paintings of people smiling. A piece like this is really important because it shows that we're all one, you know, one group. We're all one global family. Uh, my name is Linda Genste. I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I chose to call this piece, Peace Begins with a Smile. It's a quote, a Mother Teresa quote. And um, basically, I think when I started doing it, I just wanted to, you know, portray joy and make people happy and look, have people look at it and smile themselves. I've been working on this particular piece for 10 years, 11 years, I think. And it's not constant. You know, I've worked on lots of other paintings in between but it's consistent, you know, with the every year and traveling and meeting more people and wanting to portray them and adding that to the collection. So I see it as an interactive piece as well. Um, it's not something you can just sort of walk by and dismiss. I think you really do have to look at individuals with, and it could, it could take five minutes or it could be an hour, um, but I, I think I want people to interact with their smiles and just, you know, feel that kind of joy that you get physically and emotionally when you smile or when you, other people smile. Art should ask you questions and um, as opposed to just giving you answers to things. So I feel like I want people to respond to this and say, you know, well, who is that? And why are they smiling that way? And why are they smiling more and less? And, and you know, where was that interaction um, taking place? Um, so I want them to be not only smiling at you, but asking you questions about them. You can't dictate how someone smiles. So there's pieces, there's paintings that the smile is very, you know, almost invisible, but that's, that's them, you know. And there's also paintings with the smile is ear to ear. Twelve years ago, I did a series of paintings using a gas mask as a metaphor. Just a time in my life where I felt like I couldn't breathe. None of those paintings had identities. They didn't have... There was people behind the mask, but they weren't necessarily, you know, individuals. After doing this series of the gas masks, I felt like I needed to, to switch gears and do something that can spread joy, which to me was the communication of the smile. Our last trip that we went on was to Costa Rica. So there's a bunch of Costa Rican people. Guatemala, Vietnam, 
Cambodia, Morocco, France, Mexico, uh, Italy, Haiti, Ireland, uh, Laos, Thailand, Bali. You know, these are all mixed together as far as like doing something 11 years ago and doing something, you know, 11 days ago. Um, so they have different meanings along the way. I've always been so intrigued with the face because, you know, most people have two eyes and a nose and a mouth, but yet everybody looks different. And um, so that's like the connection is we all have the same um, features, but they can be rearranged in different ways to make individuals. How can we all have the exact same features and not look the same? I think of it as tiles that are connecting um, as opposed to, you know, a separation or a frame or a grout. Um, each one of these, you know, faces is, is touching the other face to make one big community. To me, it represents hope and happiness and joy and connection and positive emotion. Ideally, I would love to find a permanent home for my project in a public space where people can see it, they can enjoy it, they can move by it, they can relate to it, they can see themselves in, in the faces and um, they can touch them in some deep heart, mind, smiling way. So yeah, I, I see it as a, as a public art piece that's now looking for a home. Like a waiting room or a, a airport, a courthouse, the United Nations. <laughs> um, that's my goal in the United Nations. <laughs> yeah. I did try to represent everyone from a baby to, you know, the oldest person I could find. So many people are wearing masks and their smiles are covered and hidden. And I think that's why this piece is important. I feel like this is a huge part of me, um, but it's also something that could be relatable to everyone. I think it's just so important to remind people what connects us, not what divides us.